Kindred decks or creature type matter decks in Commander are very popular. Creatures like goblins, elves, and humans all have explicit synergies on cards, but most creature types in Magic are never or rarely referred to directly outside of their type lines. If your favorite creature type is one of these, you might feel like you can't build around them. But there are a lot of tricks that we can use to make a synergistic deck no matter what type we're using. And I'm going to prove it by building a new deck right now around a completely random type. And I can show you some of the tips and tricks that I know make this kind of thing work. Here I have a list of all the creature types in Magic, excluding any with very obvious strong synergy pieces. Some of these will still have synergistic elements or explicit reference in card text, but nothing that is overt or strong or plentiful. And we're just going to spin it, see what we get. What does that say? Oh no. Assembly worker. Alright, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and we are going to make an assembly worker deck. Wish me luck. Well, there's 12 assembly workers and they're all colorless except for some have a different color identity. We have white and that is it. What's important to look at first is are there any synergies that aren't explicit synergies? So I'm seeing something that cares about tokens. Maybe we can even use some populate because we might want to be in white if we want the autonomous assembler. And then a couple of plus one plus one counter synergies. All right, interesting, interesting. There's also this tutor self-assembler that we could use. Five is a lot and it's only a one-time thing unless we want to add some blink. We could add some blink to the package. It's not a hugely helpful effect because there's very few ETBs, right? Uh, this one's an ETB, Dutiful Replicator. And that's... Modular is technically an ETB, but... Yeah, it needs to die to move its counters off, so it's not like you can keep doing that. Um, and Autonomous Assembler, you can pay, play it for two, and then you can blink it to make it a four or five. So that's... That's not nothing. All right, interesting, cool. The next thing we want to do is we want to just put in all of our pieces that just kind of go into any Kindred deck. These are pieces that say, Oracle, choose a creature type, because we can choose assembly work. But we also want to look for a few other things, for, such as share a creature type, or Oracle shares a creature type. These cards all care about things that either share a creature type or choose the same creature type, all that interesting stuff. Now, not all these pieces are going to matter because it only matters if we actually have them fit our colored any. We're making a commander deck after all. So, what we know so far is that we want it to be white. We could add other colors in. While it is usually very helpful to have your commander be the same creature type as your kindred strategy, that's not the case. That's not available here. I think I'd rather go for some kind of artificer. Type artificer ID equal or greater than white. So I want to make sure we're including white, but we can go bigger than that. And is a commander. Okay, Tano's Solemn Survivor. Free color, two tap, create a token that's a copy of up to one target artifact token. Okay, that's actually really interesting because we are encouraged to make tokens because we have that one card that makes tokens of tokens. That might be worth it actually. I'm kind of interested in that. I think that tells us where we're starting. We're making a Tano's Solemn Survivor assembly worker with a little bit of blink and a little bit of populate. Weird, I'm into it. This looks like a fun deck. So we wanna make tokens of our artifacts in the first place. That's not so hard, we just need to add in copier spells. And copier spells are a great way of dealing with the limited effect 
of not having a ton of cards that care about, like not have, we only have 12 assembly workers, having copies of the assembly workers we have will give us extra numbers. That is beautiful. All right, and it mills cards, which can help us fill the bin for their second ability. Tano's looks great. Why is no one building Tano's decks? Wow, okay. All right, I am going to cut and I am going to build this deck because you don't want to watch that whole process, I expect. Uh, and I will see you when it is done and I will tell you how it went. <laughs> but I am very excited for this deck. It looks like it's actually going to be really, really interesting and really, really work. And that's going to be fun. All right. Okay, we are back. This deck was an adventure to make, honestly, and I'm excited to go into the details about what it all entailed, and I feel like I learned stuff, which is really cool, but for now, I have thrown the deck into Architect, and we're looking at the Playtester, so I can show you a few hands about what this deck looks like and plays like, and I can talk about things as they come up. I'll keep this. And hopefully we can draw into some assembly workers. Start of turn one, draw a card, we will play an island, we'll pass. I'll play the Guildless Commons bouncing the island, and I will pass. Play an island, play that out, generous icon. As this enters, choose a creature type, we will choose assembly worker. And then we can add a man of any color, and we can tap this to flash in assembly workers once. Next turn, yeah, I will spend this three on two here and then one more to crack this. The Bucknard's Everfull Purse. It's a two mana artifact you can spend one and tap to roll a d4 and create a number of treasure and then the player to your right gains control. It is right, you gotta keep in mind with that, which is the opposite of turn order. So it's gonna take a long time to get back to you. D4. Beautiful, beautiful. We made one treasure. That's what we want to see. So I will play the bounce. I'll bounce this island and we move to the next turn. We still need creatures, which is really disappointing. So I think we're going to just play a island and say one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to play our Tomb of Horrors Adventure. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative, which I 100% forgot was a thing it did, so that's actually kind of cool. And then whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you copy it. That's wild. So, the Undercity. Search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand. Okay, let's say, let's say an island. All right, next. Ooh, okay. Unfortunately, I don't have any creature creatures. I only have like legendary creatures. I mean, I, I have Tomb. And I think we're gonna do some nonsense with Tomb of Forest Adventures. So far, you're noticing, this doesn't look like a Assembly Worker Kindra deck. Fair enough. It is unfortunate our draw so far, but that is okay. We'll play another island, two mana on our commander. Now we can do our second spell this turn. So I'm gonna spend five mana on Zinder Split's Judgment. For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend creates a token that's a copy of a creature they control. Each foe returns a creature they control to its owner's hand. So each player, other than me, is gonna have to bounce a creature to their hand. I will make two copies of the Tomb of Horrors Adventure. Each one of these enter is going to give me another initiative trigger. I didn't even think about this. This is not going as intended. I think I'll actually go with the scry and the create a treasure. Because that's actually relevant to us. Yeah, that sounds great. Arcbound prototype. These are both great, actually, is kind of the annoying part. Let's put mirror works on the bottom and we'll leave the arcbound on top. So now we've got a pretty scary board suddenly. We have three four fours. And the next time we cast our second spell in a turn, we get to make three additional copies of it. Which is absolutely absurd. We are the threat suddenly out of nowhere. Next turn. Okay, I have drawn my Arcbound prototype. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to play Radiant Destiny for three mana and Ascend. Uh, I, I guess I'll also play a Plains this turn. <laughs> we play that. That's our first first spell this turn. And then we are going to tap our Orza Basilica, I think it is, yeah and play the Arcbound prototype. We are then gonna make one, two, three additional copies. Each of these, I haven't even read this card yet to you. Arcbound prototype, such a weird one that this counts as an assembly worker because it, it doesn't look like an assembly worker. I don't know why it counts, but it does. And it has modular two. It means it enters with two counters on it, plus and plus and counters. And when it dies, you get to move those counters to something else. Now we can also spend an additional two and tap our commander. Remember when we played our commander? and make a token copy of a token. Now this guy, I haven't read them at all, 
create a token that's a copy of up to one target artifact token for two mana and tap. So we'll make another one of these. We then also mill two, which might be relevant or might not, that's a planes. And that is a collector's vault. What I learned making this deck is that when your entire game plan is to make token copies of token copies, it doesn't matter what creature type. It doesn't even matter if you're running a kindred deck. You could run cards like this because you just name whatever it is you made a copy of. I could name Elf, I could name Monk, it doesn't actually matter, which is interesting. The benefit, of course, is that I can play Radiant Destiny early because I know I'm going to make Assembly Workers sometime just this game, like I did with this one, although we haven't used it yet, so shh, don't worry about that. You just really need those first token copies to be able to start making more with our commander, so this ends up being the game plan, even though Tomb of Horrors Adventure isn't actually an assembly worker. Next turn, Urza Prince of Krug is a late addition to the deck. I saw it early and I went, eh, maybe, and then I ended up not including them. But they're legitimately interesting. First of all, they even do make tokens, except that their tokens are one ones, which isn't as exciting. Like, we don't have huge effects or huge EDBs. We kind of just have stats in the assembly workers deck. Although, in this case, it would actually work really, really well with the artifact prototype. Not so much with the other assembly workers in there, but that's pretty cool. Either way, they add plus two plus two to each of our artifact creatures. And of course, we can now make another copy of one of these, which is pretty scary. Pretty scary stuff. We don't have a refill, unfortunately. That's kind of okay. Also worth pointing out, I just kind of glanced over it. This does have not just plus one plus one, but also vigilance as long as you have the city's blessing, which means having 10 or more permanents at any time in the game which we definitely do. I'm not gonna count them, you can you can see. That's basically how the game plays. I think that's a really good showing of what the game, the deck wants to do. Obviously it would be nicer to have some bodies earlier in the game and not just wait until turn six, but since we have a lot of ramp actually, we can get to turn six and play the Tomb of Horrors Adventure uh, relatively early. Get to six mana, I mean, but you know what I meant. Now you'll notice that this is, we are, we're running Thanos, Solemn Survivor which I mentioned that at the beginning when I was going over cards and I stuck with that. I didn't change my mind. I think Thanos is really cool actually. But you'll notice that their commander color identity is blue, white, and black. And you might have noticed I haven't drawn a single black card. The reason for this is because I decided to go with a blue, white deck instead. When building the deck, I started cutting and I had like, I don't know, 20 cards left to cut or something before I was really satisfied with it. And I noticed I had eight black cards, eight in the whole deck. And I went, I am not getting enough benefit out of being in black. The benefit of Tano's being a blue card with a colorless ability means I don't even have to worry about it. Normally in Commander, what happens is you have these cards that you'd like to run, but they're not in your Commander colored any. If Commander was about only being able to produce certain colors of mana, it would be very different, but it's not. It's about the card at all referring to that color of mana. <laughs> and so we have this situation where if this was in my 99 of a blue-white deck, it would be illegal, even though I wasn't ever planning on using that second ability. But here, since they're the commander, it just means black cards are legal in my deck, and I'm simply waiving that right. Yes, I did run the Orzhov Basilica. Why is that? It's so I have the option. First of all, I really like these lands. One of the really nice benefits of a card like this is that I'm allowed to run all three of the two color lands that come together to make my three colors which I wouldn't be allowed to do otherwise. So this just gives me an extra bounce land, and I really like bounce lands. They are basically like drawing a, another land, because you put one into your hand, but you don't go down mana value. And they couple really well with untappers, which blue has a lot of untappers. There's three untappers in this deck. It's one of the reasons why I'm using these lands in the first place, in addition to the previous reason. And the second ability is actually very cool. For four mana and tap, I can stack two artifact tokens, such as these treasures. I did make these on purpose. And then I can exile a creature or artifact from my graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it, except it's an artifact. The biggest thing this deck taught me is, dang, I want to make a Thanos deck. I want to make a non-Kindred Thanos deck. And don't get me wrong, I'm super happy with my Kindred deck. I think this Kindred deck went 
great. I am so pleased with the end result, and I will probably continue to develop this kit as more cards come out. At the time of recording this, the Fallout decks are coming out soon, and I haven't looked at any of the cards. There's probably going to be some artifact synergy that I'm going to put in this deck when those are official. I do think this deck falls into the trap that I think a lot of artifact creature kindred decks do, in that it's an artifact creature deck more than a kindred deck, right? Like Urza over here giving us plus two plus two for all of artifact creatures. That's fantastic. And it's true for any artifact creature. They don't have to be assembly workers. So there's a lot to be said for it's really hard to do kindred and artifact because artifact matters is so common and so efficient. Kindred only matters if it's more efficient than a generic effect. Oftentimes it is, but artifact creatures are already efficient effects because they're only hitting a subset of cards in the same way that Kindred does. So with that in mind, doing this again, cutting the Kindred, but keeping the artifact creature theme probably would be fantastic. That said, I do think cards like this are fantastic, and especially if you're making multiple copies, include it anyway, and then just choose whatever type you're most plentiful, probably would work well. The other tact is to make construct matters. I saw so many really cool, really powerful constructs, and they're not in this deck because they're not, they're not assembly workers, they're constructs. I think that would be probably the best plan, but hey, I don't think construct kindred matters decks are really a thing either. So this challenge to build a random kindred deck didn't tell me, dang, assembly workers are hard to make into a real deck. They told me lots of kindred things that you never thought about could work as a, as a don't think. I mean, obviously my stance is that any creature could be, you could make a kindred deck around. And I think that's sort of the main takeaway is that you might have a preference between apples and oranges, but they both have a reason to exist. And because of that, there are some really cool things we can do in this assembly worker deck that we couldn't do in a construct deck, or we couldn't do as well. Uh, for example, Dutiful Replicator. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay colorless, and then you may create a token that's a copy of a token that's not named Dutiful Replicator. This lines up perfectly with our theme, and it's inspired the theme largely, because if we can make a token copy of Dutiful Replicator while we have another token creature on the field, we can have Thanos copy Dutiful Replicator for two mana, then spend an additional one mana and make a copy of another token. So we're making two tokens for four or for three instead of making one token for two. It's actually really, really cool. And then you've got, uh, you know, Mishra's Self Replicator, which when you cast a historic spell, which all of our artifacts are, you can pay an additional one to make a token copy of this. It is a five mana for a two two, which is not great, but it gives us that first token very easily and very efficiently. In addition, probably the best one, not the best to actually play, but the best to be aware of is our self assembler. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for another assembly worker. Now, would another kindred game plan be better? Maybe. But do they have this card? I don't know. And being able to have kind of a second copy of one of our other assembly workers in our deck is really cool. They don't even have bad stats. A 4-4 four, for four, 5 is perfectly reasonable. And we can make a token copy of that. So we spent 2 mana to make another 4-4, four, four, which finds us another card. And even if those cards aren't great, that's it's better than 5 mana 4-4 four, four draw a card. Right? It's 5 it's mana 4-4 four, four, draw a card plus that card was actually searched. Sure, you can't search for any card in your library. It has to be an assembly worker, but there are good assembly workers. There are assembly workers that are worth, worth running. And that's really cool. This deck doesn't have a million assembly workers. There's, I think, 12 total, and I'm only running like nine of them. And that might sound abysmally low for a 100 card deck. But the thing about this is that we don't need to play an assembly worker every turn. We need to make a token every turn. But once we have one, that's fine. So if 10% of our 99 
our assembly workers, we're probably going to draw one in our first 10 draws. And that's including our starting seven. So the odds are actually really good that we get at least one. And then everything from there on is just gravy. So with all of that said, I hope you enjoyed Work Union, my assembly worker kindred deck. I'm legitimately pleased with how it plays and I will legitimately be playing this deck sometime in the future, not just gold fishing. If you like the gold fishing, I am planning on creating a new series that's just me playing goldfish games and that is it. It's just showcasing a deck by a goldfish. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but you can look forward to that in the future. Subscribe if you're not and you want to see that. But either way, that's me making a random Kindred Matters deck. And I'm really excited to do it again in the future. That wheel has so many more options for me just waiting, just waiting to be made. I'm so excited to find the next weird Kindred deck. I've been Darcy Bits. Have a good night.